Okay, good day. Uh, good afternoon, Daniel. It's uh, about uh, 3 p.m. your time on uh, January 11th, and we kind of came up with a few things to talk about. And the first thing here uh, was thinking with a clean slate. What do you have to say about that? Well, I think the, the best way to look at it is visualize, say, an erasable board, and there's nothing on it. And what's happened uh, basically in the learning process of many things, uh, people have a preconceived, um, you know, basically concept that they're on a path of truth uh, only because someone told them that that's what it is. Most of the time, it's just due to lack of due diligence. And, and so they sit with a group of people and it, you don't want to be the one who basically brings up a point that something may be possibly not researched uh, accurately. So, uh, and and no one wants to be held out as the dissenter uh, from a group of people. So this kind of, you know, kind of gets into this non-conformity uh, when, when you see something that's wrong uh, to, to be the one who's actually going to point out what's right could be the uncomfortable position. So anyways, we're gonna go down the fact is that uh, we can give the example, especially regarding language, uh, Christianity. If you haven't done a due diligence into either, uh, you could have most likely picked up some really bad habits. And so the bad habits of the English language uh, happen where you don't realize what you're saying. So you say words like smart when you're referring to someone having uh, wisdom or having built, uh, you know, a, you know, an ability uh, to discern. You you start to put words in that are not accurate to it and you say them, but they have meaning and they have power behind them. So the everything's upside down in the world that we see today because the actual you know, level of due diligence is so low, the uh, the amount of people who read uh, and know what they're saying and uh, doing a research on something is is very, very small uh, out of the population that would that actually go about doing that. Uh, so uh, we're required to do that. You're required to do that even if you want to participate in the legal. In the legal, you're required to, have, you know, to memorize and know four million laws on average in statutes. Um, they pass laws every day, but when you're in the legal, uh, as a member, a member of the legal public, you are basically in the obligation immediately to to basically keep yourself updated. Uh, you can't come back and say you didn't know. Um, that won't be a defense because ignorance of the legal system is no excuse. So um, when we're talking about just learning, uh, and 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 probably we'll just compare it to. We'll use a parable of a, a carpenter, um, a carpenter uh, who is very well uh, skilled, so to speak, at it, uh, has his talent uh, down uh, to a complete, almost perfection. Uh, he may have someone who says, I'd like to work with you and, and, and uh, assist you uh, in your carpentry. And then he realizes that the carpenter who's coming to him has some really bad habits, uh, doesn't use the proper tools and makes a mess and cuts corners and eventually uh, re reflects on the other carpenter. And the other carpenter uh, may take a position and say, uh, I appreciate that you would like to help, but your carpentry uh, is quite, you know, shabby. And it's not, it's not, uh, it's not at the level it needs to be to work with me because it's not accurate. Uh, as to how I would actually do carpentry work. So, of course, the attitude comes up immediately of the other carpenter, gets very upset, and it's almost like, oh, so you know, you think you know everything, right? So the ego comes in. But in reality, does that make the carpenter who sees the flaws uh, on the wrong side? No. Uh, it just means the other party is not willing to change. And so Christianity has really become that in its legalization because the legalists wanted to basically create a legal form of Christianity, which is completely an oxymoron because Christianity has nothing to do with legal. Legal uh, is opposite to what the gospel or what Christ taught 
Uh, it's Christ taught free grace of what he was going to bring. Uh, he was bringing back, he was bringing us ba basically back to perfection uh, through uh, his, uh, you know, greatest event that he was going to accomplish um, to fulfill the will of God with his life. But uh, the, uh, the legal system is about error. It's about penalty. It's about fee. It's about fine. It's about uh, things that are uh, not what God intended with mankind when he created them. So to wipe the slate clean um, is to realize uh, that you may not know. And if you may not know, uh, you could end up in a problem just as a guitar teacher will show a new student where to place their fingers on the guitar. And so basically, as they're doing that, if they don't place their fingers in the right place, especially if they're there to form a chord, then it will actually do the opposite. It will sound like a discord. And so that's where the problem is on what we've been going through in the journey of actually seeking the truth out of the Bible, seeking the truth out of language. Uh, if you're not on the truthful path, then you're mixed in with a bit of error, which will not cause an accord. It will cause a discord. And so the world of legal operates in discord to God and truth. And unfortunately, Christianity in a legal pseudo uh, sense of what has been portrayed to be Christianity has been run by really bad shepherds and bad teachers because they operate in a legal sense, twisting what was to, meant to be spiritual, clear and true. Uh, they operate in error. And so there isn't a single Christian uh, registered creature of the state, uh, religious organization that operates with the government uh, that is actually in truth. They are in error uh, and they have become unequally yoked with unbelievers. So it takes time to, to actually do this kind of due diligence, but... Uh, if we are going to learn we're, truth, we're going to have to be willing uh, to wipe the slate clean and start from there and then do the due diligence to see whether or not what we're learning is truthful. That would be just like the early Bereans spoken of uh, in the New Covenant or the New Testament scriptures. So uh, please you know, realize that what we're sharing with you was based on due diligence uh, we are making certain that what we are researching is correct and true. We're not here trying to assume or presume anything, because when we do that, that's when we're open uh, or we're opening the door to error. And uh, certainly the, the world is lying in the power of the wicked one. He doesn't operate the earth or truth. He operates a worldly, secular, fictitious world of delusional participants. All right, Dan. Thank you.